Welcome back here to Mighty Mac on YouTube. Once again, if you like the content they provide here, we've been here all weekend long covering all the action here for the Summer Racing Equipment and HRA Nationals in Norwalk, Ohio. So if you like the content, be sure to subscribe today to the channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming action as we get set for an incredible summer months of racing. And without further ado, let's get into the video. We started off a bit rough, but it kind of picked up towards the end. Uh, if you don't know what happened, when we got here, it started raining like immediately, downpour at about 11 a.m., about two hours from when qualifying was supposed to start. They got the track dry at about 3.30, and it was lights on for the rest of the afternoon. That's kind of why we're in the position that we're in now. They are still running sportsmen because they weren't able to run it to completion here today. So they're going to get round one done for a couple of the classes and then finish it off tomorrow. That's why you kind of still hear that there's still cars going to be going on track during this video. We do have the results to go over for the top four pro categories as well as talking about what it's going to mean heading into Sunday. Let's take a look at your results from today's qualifying. In pro stock, Matt Smith stays number one with his 748, the track record they set back on Friday afternoon. Anji Smith still rounds out second. Gage Scherer third. John Evaristo rounds out fourth. Richard Gatson, who won the Mission Foods Too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge, rounds out in fifth. Chase Van Sant, another impressive run, standing in sixth. Hector Rana Jr., reigning winner of this event, back in the seventh. John Hall, eighth. Mark Ingerson down in ninth. Steve Johnson in tenth. Chris Bostick, eleventh. Ron Porno in 12th, E.G. Kawakami in 13th, and Wesley Wells in 14th. In the factory hot rod class, just like in Pro Stock Motorcycle, not too many changes whatsoever because of the fact the air is really humid today. And humidity is Pro Stock car and motorcycle's worst enemy because fuel cars can tune around it to still get the power out. But when you're in a Pro Stock car, you don't have that opportunity. You're kind of stuck wherever you are. So today was kind of a tune-up run to get ready for Sunday. Greg Anderson holds on number one qualifier. Eric Anders has to settle for second. Derek Kramer holds on to third. Matt Harford, fourth. Dallas Glenn, fifth. Aaron Stanfield in sixth. Eric Latino, seventh. Mason McGahey, eighth. Jerry Tucker, ninth. Troy Calvin Jr., tenth. Chris McGahey, eleventh. Jake Calvin Jr., and twelfth. And then you have the Quadras. Fernando Quadra Jr., thirteenth. David Quadra, fourteenth. Christian Quadra, fifteenth. Larry Morgan in sixteenth. Now, here's where things really started to change in the fuel classes. You saw a lot of changes being made between Q3 and Q4, and it shows in the results. Austin Proc still holds on to number one qualifier, actually better this time, and it's Mission Foods Too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge final against Bob Tasco, which he won. Improved from, believe, an 8.63 to an 8.53, still holds on to number one qualifier. J.R. Todd up there in second. Blake Alexander, reigning winner, hands on to take back the third position. Really good result for that team. They're going to be coming here tomorrow with a whole lot of momentum. They have a really good shot of winning this event. Bob Tasca fourth. Paulie fifth. Matt Hagen jumps up to sixth. Daniel Wilkerson in seventh. Alexis DeJoria rounds out the top half in eighth. Chad Green down in ninth. Ron Caps in tenth. Cruz Pedregon down at eleventh. Bobby Bodie twelfth. Dave Richards. I believe he had a bad run in Q3, but the other three runs in Q1, 2, and 4 were very solid. Was able to get on the racetrack. Has still yet to see the three second mark but a big improvement for that team this weekend he settles the 14th chris king is able to make the race here because the fact there's nobody going home in 15th and then joe morrison ends up 16th lastly in top fuel doug coletta looking unstoppable once again number one qualifier here today also takes some of the mission fields too fast too tasty one the three six nine two he won it back at epping had a bad outing back in Chicago, went out round one, but ever since then, one epping in the final round. Went to Bristol to the final round, lose to Tony Schumacher, and then went to the final round back in Virginia, won there. So he has made the final round ever since he lost round one in Chicago, and is looking very, very strong this weekend. Undeniably unstoppable. Nobody seems to have an answer for that Coletta Motorsports dragster. Justin Ashley jumped from the bottom half of the field up to second with a 702 in Q4. Antron Brown drops the third. Steve Torrance in fourth. Tony Stewart was another 
impressive run so far this week and had a really good outing back in Virginia. Doubles that up here again in Norwalk in the fifth position. Sean Langdon, sixth. Trip Tatum, a good result in seventh. Doug Foley, another good result in eighth. T Billy Torrens down here in ninth. TJ Zizzo, tenth. Clay Milliken, eleventh. Jasmine Salinas in twelfth. Sean Reed, thirteenth. Dan Mercier, 14th. Tony Schumacher has still over 15th, but remember, he won from the 14th position back at Bristol, so that doesn't really mean anything when you're talking about the Sarge. 16th in the final car is going to be Kyle Wurzel with an 801. Think about that. Just to make the show here, he had to basically run a 7. That's the last time I saw that was back at the Indianapolis U.S. Nationals in 2022. That's how good this class is this weekend. Car is not making a show. Josh Hard, this is a bittersweet, bitter pill for him to swallow. Arnold Carriers has a shop right across the street from here, and now he has to go home empty-handed, not even being able to show up for round one in the RNO Carriers Dragster. So he's going to make a lot of tough decisions to try and improve between here and the next race when they head out to Seattle. So they're going to have a lot of unanswered questions they need to figure out because the team is very much struggling. An 8.03, barely misses the show to Kyle Wortel's 8.01. Spencer Massey driving across the, the ball with 8.07, sees him in 18th. Left. Travis Stop Shoemaker Stop. is last in 19th. So once again, we do have highlights to show you here from Norwalk for the two rounds of qualifying, as well as your Mission Foods Too Fast and Challenge. And we also had a chance to talk to a couple of drivers, including one of the post-doc motorcycle riders and a defending winner here in Norwalk. Matt Smith, 105 to the 60-foot clocks. 674-201-31. Hey, Norwalk, that's the quickest motorcycle that's ever gone down this racetrack. A brand new track record for Matt and the Denso folks. 6.748, 201 the speed. So Greg and Dallas, one and two in the points, final two down. Derek Kramer, number one. Six fifty nine. I knew there was something out there. Two oh seven sixty nine. Give Greg Anderson three points. Move him to the top. The finish line stripe. It is going to be Austin Proc, and they gave him the whole Magilla. Three eighty five three. Three hundred and twenty nine miles an hour. Tasca a blistering three eighty eight. But my goodness, eighty five three. Three twenty nine. There's we're running out of microphones to drop around here. Run good last week as well. They're trying to keep that momentum going. Applied innovations on the side of Doug Coletta's championship machine. Well, that should move Doug up a little bit. 3.6, 9, 2, 332 miles an hour. And Doug Coletta, by a full tenth of a second, goes right straight to the top. So the weather obviously isn't what we all would have appreciated. You've been standing here for probably the better part of over an hour, sitting here delayed. Kind of what is the mindset right now as you get ready for this with how bad the wind is, now knowing you're going to have a pretty much fresh racetrack by the time you go out there for Q3? Yeah, you know, the one cool thing about this place is they, I mean, Norwalk's going to do everything they can for the fans and the racers, and um, we all definitely appreciate that. Um, you know, as, if they can get the track dry, it's just so soggy out here, and it keeps doing this nonstop sprinkle, but I know if they can uh, get it dry, we'll have a great racetrack and hopefully at least get one run in today and uh, put a show on for all the fans. And last night, after the first two runs of qualifying, you end up six on the charts. Uh, pretty much the, I want to say, the fourth fastest Buell, maybe Hector Ronald Jr., maybe fifth. How were those first two runs for you, and how was it running on that Friday night track? Oh, it was great. You know, we put down two good runs, and really I think two through eight right now are pretty tight. Um, we're all separated by just a couple hundreds. So um, it was great. You know, made two clean runs. Um, we slowed down just a little bit on the second one but um, you know we're, we're really banking on having having four qualifiers in a four qualifier race and it kind of allows you to try some things maybe in sessions where you know the weather isn't going to be there
there. And, um, you know, it was kind of deceiving last night. The, the density altitude was a little bit higher than I think people would have thought. The, the barometer dropped a little bit, and that kind of caused the, the density altitude to jump up. So, um, you know, some people have made a couple 200-mile-an-hour runs, and I think Gianna went 201. So that was awesome to see. And there's definitely performance out there, but um, we'll just have to keep picking away at it. You know, it's uh, it's tough to, to come out here and nail it every single run, but we put down two consistent runs, and we're, we're right there with everybody. So um, come race day, it's going to be some tight competition. You talked about that performance a little bit. Going into the season, we were all focused on the Matt Smith racing trailers being the ones that were going to catch up with Gage Herrera. Come Chicago, you really, I would say, turned a lot of heads with the performance you had, running it to the finals, and then matching Gage Herrera's 60-foot time, just kind of sneaking up on everybody and getting that performance out of it. What was the difference that made for you guys to get up to where you could run with these guys and be up with the Vance and Hines, and how have you guys been able to hold on to that when you have the Matt Smith guys chasing after you as well? Um, you know, I think for us and our team, it was just a lot of time and runs. Um, we didn't get any preseason testing in, so um, the first couple races we went to were, were my first runs of the year since Dallas of last year. So um, for us, it was just time and, and working, picking away at the 60 foot. Um, Tim's been working really hard at finding some power, and we've we've got our mile an hour up there to where we're, we're more competitive. And um, that was kind of the first thing was we had tried some things, and we just didn't quite have the mile an hour, and we're, we're struggling to get to the 60 foot. And when you don't have those two things it, it just is compounding you know so once we've got the 60 foot figured out and down there to consistently 104s it really helped us and compounds the rest of the track and now that we're finding some mile an hour it's it's just making it all that much easier to stay up there with the top guys and um, you know I think we are one of those top teams and and uh, we've seen it the last few races where we've qualified really well and um, you know unfortunately last weekend I was 002 red kind of going for it and that's just part of the game you know all these bikes are so fast and, and the competition so stout you just got to race aggressively and that's kind of always been my mindset so um, it's just one of those one of those tough deals and uh, yeah we're, uh, we're we found something in the 60 foot for sure and we've got a good good window for Tim to tune the bike in so um, yeah with all of that it's it's really really helped and, and helped our qualifying performance a lot and you mentioned that red light that happened back in Virginia you also had a red light back at Bristol so you had two red lights where you pretty much had the faster bike compared to the other person in their lane you talked about the competition is that sort of the pressure getting to you a little bit knowing that you have you're expected to perform in order to make it to the final rounds here is that just kind of getting to you when you get on the line causing that not really um for me i i've always been one that has raced fairly aggressively especially on the starting line um i think i would rather go red than lose on a whole shot that's just the mentality i've always had um and you know last week being 002 it was just it was so close and um not to make excuses but the sun went or the the cloud cover rolled in and we ran that race right before um, the rain hit and it was just I really didn't do a good job of taking into account how much brighter the tree was going to be um, and I think that's that contributed part of where it was but you know also I went into that round thinking I can't be afraid of going red again you know I think as soon as you make a fear-based decision on, on red lighting or whatever it is you're going to make other mistakes in other areas so for me it's just blocking out what happened in those other runs and racing aggressively and I, I know it'll come you know it's right now we're we're just trying to get into a sweet spot before the countdown and right now we're solidly in the points so um, I'm just constantly trying things trying different things to where I can go up there and be comfortable and, and hopefully cut a light so um, this weekend's been off to a really good start I think I was 004 and 009 or something like that so I'm um, just trying to work back to get to where I was last year I think last year I was was as comfortable as I could possibly be on the starting line and um, kind of lost a little bit of that I felt like but um, just working on getting back there you know I, I don't really have much pressure on me I, I think I put pressure on myself to perform but um, it's just a constant battle to try and block that out and uh, go out and, and do my job essentially. And I guess the last question I have for you, last night with those two sessions, you're looking at kind of somewhat low heat and a little bit of high humidity. Now you're going to have the ex both extremes. You're going to have very high heat and probably double the humidity of what of that. Talk about the challenges of kind of tuning that bike, of what you guys need to do to get this in that right air to where you can go out there and blitz the track and try and take the number one spot away from Matt Smith. Yeah, you know, it gets tough. The weather is a huge factor, and it's something that you do take into account. You know, you look at sessions where, you know, you think this might be what sets the ladder 
you know, and um, I don't know how much performance will be out there. We'll see what the density altitude and what the track's like and everything like that, but I think it's just trying to make the best decisions we can for that run, and um, you can't can't look at the results too much and, and think about qualifying and where you're going to end up. It's just what can we do with the conditions that we're, we're given and, and how can we capitalize on this situation. You know, I think there's a lot to be said about maybe you don't move up the qualifying ladder, but if you're up there the fourth fastest of a round or the, the second fastest of a round or something like that, that speaks volumes to your setup and how you approach situations. All right, Blake. So obviously not the morning anybody would have wanted, a little bit of rain. Uh, how has your morning been going so far as you try to wait out the weather here? Uh, yeah, we're on the gas. We've got a full hospitality area, rain or shine. We really just wanted to entertain everyone from Scheffler and have a good day out here. And you get to come back to Norwalk. No question, this place obviously has a lot of meaning to you. Uh, after last year, the emotional win you got to experience here, how much does it mean to you just to get to come back to this track one year later? Hey, it's, it's pretty cool to be here, and like I'm getting treated well by everyone in the area and everyone in Cleveland. I've made a lot of friends here, and uh, it's been a neat experience these last five years to proceed so well in Top Fuel and Funny Car and uh, kind of have my career be made at this place. And then last night you had the two qualifying runs, one in the afternoon, one fully enveloped in the darkness. Both runs really planted a card and went straight down A to B. How was it run for you and how did the team react? How was uh, the data showing for the car when you got back? Yeah, there's more there and we, we know that and we, we kind of are trying to be cautious about how we do it. We ended up six last night. Uh, I think the conditions you'll be able to throw, you'll be able to throw down today though, you know, and I think we'll get a chance to throw down tonight. And, uh, any chance that we get to race Bob Task and Aaron Brooks, we enjoy it. And then, obviously, going into the season, you haven't been there for every race, but with the performance that you've had, you find yourself sitting 10. I believe it's a 6-2 and first-round record. Ever since this race last year, you guys have really turned the corner and the performance has gone up. How crucial was that for you guys, and how much has that changed things moving forward? Yeah, I mean, when you figure stuff out out here, you got to learn how to keep running it and keep doing it. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate to figure some stuff out that day. Uh, we've also had some good racing luck along the way, and uh, I think there's been tons of hard work in between there, and that's really the whole paramount you know, picture of it, is that we, we work really hard over here. And then going to this year as well, it's been an incredibly strong performance up until now. What has been that difference maker for you guys that got you now to the level where I believe it was back at Epping? You made it to the semifinals, and then you've made it multiple second round appearances and had a good shot of winning these events. Yeah, I mean, it's all of us pulling the weight together. Uh, we, no one on a field team can do anything by themselves, and it starts with Jim and Dave. They're making great calls, and uh, I'm trying to do my best job driving it, and we really don't have any weak link on this race team right now. And then going into this session, you're going to have high heat, high humidity now. What are the challenges going to be for you guys trying to tune this race car to keep the momentum that you guys have in going to make sure that you get the runs you need for Sunday? Yeah, with, with all the water in the air, you're going to have to spruce your stuff up a little bit and uh, make it think that it's not there. But uh, we know how to do that, and we're going to kind of try to uh, look at the computer and just keep running our race over here by ourselves, even though there's a lot of other people watching us. And then lastly, heading into tomorrow, if you were able to win this race again, how much would it mean for you to go back to back here? Uh, it's getting pretty far ahead of us, but obviously anytime you can turn on a wind light four times in a row, that's it's a good day. And that is going to wrap the video here from Norwalk. As you see, they're still running cars. We'll be back here early in the morning for Sunday's eliminations. Be sure to follow me on social media pages down below. MightyMac03 on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We've been posting photos throughout the event. Thanks to Brody for the work he's done with that. Be sure to subscribe to the channel today so you don't miss any of the content going forward heading into the summer months. Be sure to like the video. Be sure to comment down below who you think is going to win tomorrow. And until, oh, by the way, fill out your drag racing back of an of brackets tonight. Don't forget to do that or I will be very disappointed in you. And until Sunday night, this has been Mighty Mac. We will see you next time.